It's after nine o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Welcome everybody. If you need an agenda, please go ahead and grab one off of the back bookshelf. Um, approval of the October 22nd, 2018 minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review them? If there's no corrections, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Approval of today's agenda. Uh, if there's no changes to the agenda, I'd entertain a motion to approve today's agenda as well. So I moved. so move. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. PJ, the consent agenda. Actually, let me talk about the, there was a there was a, um, a new story, at least from what I've heard. I didn't see it. So I just want to address this just in case anybody's here for this today. The Kroll hearing for the rescheduling of that date is we're just going to talk about the rescheduling of that date today and probably reschedule that it was not rescheduled to today so if there's any confusion about that the curl hearing is not today we're just uh, going to discuss setting a new meeting for the curl hearing all right pj consent agenda pj conover director planning department consent agenda the following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of the planning commission are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decisions. There's quite a few. Yes, there is. <laughs> item three, conditional use permit review 9138 for Harmony Baptist Church to review a church in a suburban residential district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 9138 with five conditions. Item four, conditional use permit review 9841 for Perry Acres LLC to review a mobile home park in a suburban residential district. Staff recommends to end conditional use permit 9841 as the property has been annexed into the city of Rapid City. Item five, conditional use permit review 9842 for Perry Acres LLC to review a mobile home park in a suburban residential district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 9842 with 18 conditions. Item six, conditional use permit review 0847 for Roger Stockstend to review a single wide manufactured home as a permanent residence in the suburban residential district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 0847 with six conditions. Item seven, conditional use permit review 1307 for Jack Brott to review the operation of a dude ranch to include lodging and horse trail rides in a general agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1307 with 12 conditions. <coughs> Item eight, conditional use permit review 1430 for uh, Sherry Farley to review a single wide manufactured home to be used as a caretaker's residence in the limited agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1430 with five conditions. Item nine, conditional use permit review 1713 for Diana Bryant to review living in an existing single wide mobile home while building a single family residence on the subject property in a suburban residential district. Staff recommends the end conditional use permit 1713 as it is no longer needed. Item 10, conditional use permit review 1733 for bituminous paving, Terry Sewell is the agent to allow a temporary hot mix asphalt batch plant, stockpile site, and contractor storage area for contract work in the general agriculture district. Staff recommends to continue the review of conditional use permit 1733 to the November 26, 2018 planning commission meeting with two conditions. Item 11, conditional use permit review 1736 for Garrett and Caitlin Shields, Hinterwood LLC, to review a recreational resort to include the use of the existing bed and breakfast and to rent the lower portions of it and the addition of the maximum of eight seasonal guest cabins on the subject property in a limited agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1736 with 23 conditions. Item 12, construction permit review 1703 for Mitch Morris to review the grading of the site and the use of a storage area to stockpile soil and concrete debris. Staff recommends approval of the extension of construction permit 1703 with seven conditions. Item 13, construction permit review 1713 for Western Construction Incorporated to review a portable asphalt batch plan on the subject property and to level and grade approximately 26 acres with berms and dust control ponds implemented on site. 
Staff recommends approval of the extension of construction permit 1713 with nine conditions. Item 14, construction permit review 1714 for Cody Shad to review the construction of a road construction outside of a section line right away and to satisfy a condition, a condition of approval for CS 1602. Staff recommends to continue the review of construction permit 1714 to the December 3rd, 2018 planning commission meeting with one condition. Item 15, construction permit review 1715 for City of Rapid City, Banner and Associates as the agent to review the installation of a six inch, eight inch and 12 inch water main to provide Rapid City potable water to the Mesa View subdivision and Morris Lane. Staff recommends to end construction permit 1715 with the applicant's concurrence. Item 16, Plan Unit Development Review 9301 for George Bieber to review a recreation resort in a planned unit development. Staff recommends approval of the extension of Plan Unit Development 9301 with five conditions. Item 17, Plan Unit Development Review 0509 for Richard Sterkel to review an existing plan unit development in accordance with Section 213 and 508 of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. Staff recommends approval of the extension of plan unit development 0509 with 14 conditions. <coughs> Item 18, layout plat 1738 for Dorothy Johnson Estates. Great Western Bank is the personal representative for Dorothy Johnson Estates, which is to create lots A, B, C, and D of Johnson Estate subdivision. Staff recommends to continue layout plat 1738 to the December 3rd, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Item 19, rezone 1710 and comprehensive plan amendment 1709 for Dorothy Johnson Estates, Great Western Bank personal representative of Dorothy Johnson Estates to rezone 21.39 acres from limited agriculture district to suburban residential district and to amend the Pennington County comprehensive plan to change the future land use from plan unit development sensitive to suburban residential district. Staff recommends to continue rezone 1710 and comprehensive plan amendment 1709 to the December 3rd, 2018 planning commission meeting. Three more. Item 20, conditional use permit 1841 for Andrew Foley to allow a single wide mobile home to be used as a single family residence on the subject property in the general agriculture district. Staff recommends to continue conditional use permit 1841 to the November 26, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Item 21, conditional use permit 1842 for Keith and Sandra Lochner to allow a hair salon to be located within a detached garage in a subject property in the suburban residential district. Staff recommends to continue conditional use permit 1842 to the November 26, 2018 Planning Commission meeting to allow for re-advertisement. Last one, item 22, construction permit 1813 for James and Amanda Tyler, Taylor to construct a road to access a future residence. Staff recommends approval of construction permit 1813 with seven conditions. Any items that staff would like to have pulled for separate consideration? No, sir. All right, any items from the membership that need to be pulled? Oh, any items that the membership want pulled? Mr. Chair. Yes. Item number um, five <clears throat> and item number 22. 22. All right. Any others? No. Was that 5 and 22? 5 and 22. Thank you. Any audience members like to have any of these consent items removed from the consent um, agenda? If not, that leaves our consent agenda as th items number 3 through 4, 6 through 21. And if that's the case, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Take us to item number five, please. Thank you. My quick question on item number five was, uh, it appears that uh, lot 36 had a uh, applied for a carport back in 2011. Uh, didn't do it. Um, some comments were written that uh, it had setback issues, but then the carport has uh, shown up, so to say, and now it's one of the non-conforming ones. And my question is, how far into the 25-foot setback is it? Is it an issue as far as, you know, access, uh, site distances, sidewalk, that kind of stuff? See if I can pull up the picture of it. Um, it's that one right there. By my measurement, it's about five feet from the property line. Um, that fence line right there just beyond the, the mailbox is, without it getting surveyed, what I would anticipate is probably pretty close to what the property line is. Um, so by my measurement on rapid map, um, it's probably about five feet from the property line. 
has staff received any complaints about the carport? Um, I have not recently, but I did talk to the property manager last week about this carport. Um, so she does understand what needs to go into um, bringing this particular carport into compliance. And so they need to come back to the board for a setback variance? Yes. Yep. Okay. I have no further questions and would recommend a, approval of uh, the extension of conditional use permit 9842 with the 18 conditions. There's a motion for approval. Second. And a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number 22. My quick question on item number 22 was uh, I didn't see that there were any comments from the, the South Dakota Department of Transportation and there's, uh, if they have an approach that's uh, coming to the highway, won't they be required to get an approach permit? Uh, they do have an approach permit. They I must do. have just forgot to put that in the staff report. Okay, so they, they have applied for and, re and have received a, an approach permit from the DOT? Yep. Okay. I have uh, no further questions on item number 22 and I would recommend a, uh, or would motion uh, uh, for approval of construction permit 1813 with the seven conditions listed. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion to second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. That takes us to item number 23. Good morning. Item number 23 is construction permit CP1812, um, and the applicant is in the audience, and we just did speak with him, and we would like to continue this item until November 26, 2018, Planning Commission meeting. So moved. Motion to move the uh, to continue to no the November 26 meeting. Motion by Rich. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. That takes us to item number 24. All right, item 24, Cassie Bolstead, Assistant Planning Director, sorry. Um, item 24 is a preliminary plat, 1834. This is to create lots one through eight of the Keystone Y subdivision. Um, the applicant is Shriner Investment, Shane Shriner, the surveyor is Spurlet Consulting. As this property exists today, it's four separate mining claims. Um, all of them are currently zoned uh, General Agriculture District. There is no special flood hazard area, um, and they are all located within um, an existing road district. Um, what they are proposing to do with this plat um, is they are proposing to create eight lots out of this. Now, there is also a 40-foot wide access easement that is proposed on this plat that would provide access to all eight lots. Um, there's a 55-foot radius turnaround noted on both proposed lots four and six. And the proposed lots do not meet the minimum lot size requirement for general agriculture districts, so they will have to be rezoned or get the appropriate lot size variances. Um, this request was routed through the interdepartmental review process. The county highway department does still have um, several concerns regarding the proposed access through there, um, as there are several things that don't appear to meet the subdivision regulations. Um, so they will either have to redesign the proposed roadway through there, or they will have to um, request subdivision regulation variances. Um, this um, proposed access also will likely need to be named. Um, well, it will need to be named since it provides access to more than five lots. So they will have to go through that process as well. Um, this was before you in June of this year um, for their layout plat. It got approved by the Board of Commissioners on June 19th. Um, what they did, the reason this kind of took so long to get back to the preliminary plat is they actually had to redesign this proposed access. Before in the layout plat, um, it was a much simpler proposed access through there, but in order to try to meet um, as many subdivision regulations as they can in terms of slope and grades and things along those lines, um, they did some pretty significant design plans for this proposed access in here. Um, so that also, in turn, did a little bit to change some of the acreages of the proposed lots. The acreage changes are pretty minimal between the layout plat and the preliminary plat, so staff didn't see um, a need for it for them to start over with the layout plat. 
Um, if the preliminary plat is approved, the applicant will need to obtain at a minimum approval of all of the following before it can be filed with the Register of Deeds. Um, they'll need a construction permit as part of this road already exists on these properties. They'll need to name the road. They'll need to do subdivision regulation variances. Um, they'll either need to do lot size variances or rezone, and then they'll need to do their final plat. So staff is recommending approval of the preliminary plat 1834 with 14 conditions. Any questions for staff? Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. I just have a simple little question, but I'm I'm kind of confused. On the on under on the first page under size, it's it's you know 15.5 acres. Mm -hmm. But then when you add up the different acreages of these four lots, it comes out to be closer to 30, as well as, you know, if you add up the acreages of the eight lots, it's about 30. So what's where did the 15, where does that fit in? Um I guess I would have to look and see where that 15.503 comes from. Um, that The front page is usually pulled off of rapid map, so it's possible that maybe we just didn't add in one of the mining claims that already exists right now. Um, we pull that information off of rapid map, and then the proposed lots comes from what the surveyor I um, see. Okay. put on their plat. All so right. I'll look at that acreage, though, for their final plat. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Rich. Have all of the design concerns from the highway department been addressed? Where, when they resubmitted their plans, were they able to uh, uh, fix all of the, the issues that they, they had? Um, I have not seen updated plans as of yet. Um, from the layout plat to now, um, they've done some significant changes. Um, would the highway department's comments are based on the roadway that you see right now. Mm -hmm. I have not seen any updated plans for them, and I don't know if they've been having discussions with the highway department or not. Um, I actually have a meeting with um, the surveyor this afternoon to kind of discuss some things moving forward with this plat. So I don't know if they're going to try to redesign it or not. Um, there's some pretty crazy topography up there. So I know when they submitted them last time, they were concerned that they might not be able to hit all of the slope requirements. So they might be looking at just doing some subdivision regulation variances to um, try to deal with it the best that they can. Any further questions for staff? Any members of the audience want to speak on behalf of this item? Mr. Chair, I have, a, I have another question. So if, if we approve this preliminary plat and then they move forward and do the design changes and then they submit their final plat um, and, and they're not able to make all of those uh, changes to the design, then, then they'd have to require, uh, they would have to get approved variances prior to the final plat being completed, correct? Correct, yes. Okay, no further questions. Fair enough. Any further questions? Seeing none, the current recommendation is approval of the preliminary plat PL1834 with the following 14 conditions. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Takes us to item number 25. Thank you. Item 25 is the layout plat 1835 and a subdivision regulations variance 1807. This is to create lots one and two of Castle Creek Estates and to waive some platting requirements. Um, the applicant is John and Barbara Wilson. The surveyor is Fisk Land Surveying. Um, there is a representative from Fisk in the audience today if you have any questions. As this property exists today, it is zone general agriculture district. It's 163.01 acres. No special flood hazard access is off of South Castle Creek Road via a private road easement, and it currently contains a single family residence, an indoor arena, and an on-site wastewater treatment system. So what they are proposing to do with this is they are proposing to put this into lot one and lot two of Castle Creek Estates. Lot one would be 80.04 acres. Um, and would be vacant. Lot two would be 83.07 acres and would contain the existing structures. Um, this was routed through the interdepartmental review process. Um, the highway department did have a comment regarding wanting to see the line dividing lots one and two angled to meet the center line of the access road. Um, after this staff report was written, the surveyor actually did contact the highway department and they discussed that line. The highway department is now satisfied with where that line meets. Um, the surveyor has 
has assured the highway department that there is plenty of frontage access for that proposed lot one. Um, so the highway department no longer has that concern for where that um, center line comes in. Um, the subdivision regulations variance that they are proposing is they are requesting that the plat be at a scale of one inch to 300 feet. Um, staff does not see an issue with this due to the size of the lot. Um, it would be difficult to get it to the one inch equals 100 feet as our subdivision regulation states. Um, um, they are also requesting to waive any additional road improvements to South Castle Creek Road. Um, South Castle Creek Road is an improved forest service road and a forest service special use permit is required for any road improvements to that road. The third one that they're requesting is dedication of right of way and improvements to un the undeveloped section line right of way. Um, the section lines surrounding the subject property are mostly located on four service lands where section line right of ways are not recognized. There is a small corner of section line right of way that crosses the subject property on an eastern corner. Um, so staff does not see an issue with waiving this requirement. And the last one that they're requesting is percolation test and soil profile hole information. Proposed lot two already has an existing on-site wastewater treatment system and percolation test and soil profile hole inspection would be required prior to the issuance of a building permit on proposed lot one. Um, so the subject property, the reason that they're doing this, this property currently consists under one tax ID, but it's actually three separate legal descriptions. So they're proposing to reconfigure these lot lines in order to consolidate all three of those legal descriptions into two platted lots. Um, so for the purposes of a layout plat, staff does not see any significant issues with the applicant's request. Um, so I would like to do the recommendations in two, if I could, Mr. Chair. Um, the recommendation for the subdivision regulations variance SB 1807, staff recommends approval of subdivision regulations variance 1807 for the following waivers, plat scale of one inch to 300 feet, any additional road improvements to South Castle Creek Road, dedication of right-of-way and improvements to the undeveloped section line right-of-way, and percolation test and soil profile hole information. All right, any questions for staff? Any audience members like to speak on behalf of this item? Seeing none, first recommendation for subdivision regulation variance, staff recommends approval of SV1807 with the following waivers. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. And then my second recommendation for layout plat 1835, staff would recommend approval of layout plat 1835, and I would like to change that to 10 conditions. Um, I would recommend that condition number one be removed as the surveyor and the highway department have satisfied that requirement and both seem to be um, agreeable to where the, the lines are at this time. Any questions for staff on this one? Any audience members like to speak on behalf of this item? Seeing none, current recommendation is to approve layout plat PL 1835 with the following 10 conditions uh, based on the edits that Cassie, Cassie just gave. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Takes us to item number 26. Item 26 is layout plat 1836 to create lots A and B of Nautilus Acres subdivision. The applicants and agents at this time are Brett and Linda Hilgeman, <clears throat> and the landowners are Harry and Ro uh, Rosine, Rosina Hilgeman, if I can get that right, and the subject property is 2.59 acres. The Hilgemans were before you earlier this year to request a caretaker's residence on the subject property, and that conditional use permit was granted in May of uh, this year. On the subject property, there is an existing cabin, a double-wide mobile home a shed, and they take access off of Sanctuary Place. There is also a recorded uh, outhouse on the property, which the applicant has stated they're going to remove um, from the property. As you see on the screen, there is uh, the request to create lots A and lot B of Nautilus Acres subdivision. On the left-hand side outlined in yellow is the um, actual drawing from the proposed layout plat, and to the right is a site survey showing the existing structures on the property and their encroachments or distances from lot lines. As you can see, about nine o'clock on that drawing where they're looking to vacate a portion of Sanctuary Place right-of-way, there is appears to be a shed in that right-of-way, plus it's also 5.1 feet according to the um, surveyor from the lot line it needs to be a minimum of eight feet and also it appears that part of that house is encroaching into that right-of-way with their request to vacate that through this planning process 
Um, those two items will no longer be an issue as far as the right of way, but that shed will need to be removed or a lot size variance or a setback variance be obtained to be able to encroach that close to the lot line. With those options, the applicant has stated they're just going to move it. <laughs> It'd be easier that way. Uh, this was rather through the interpartmental review. The highway department mentioned that uh, with the subdivision regulation requires uh, that there be a 40 foot, a 40 feet, a foot wide um, access easement on the property. They're only requesting a 25. The applicant can choose to request that during the subdivision regulations variance portion. They just have not applied for that at this time. The county environmental supervisor, uh, planning supervisor, excuse me, I'd just like to mention that there's a construction permit would be needed for any disturbance greater than 10,000 square feet, that the outhouse will either have to have, um, have the pit filled in or a vault privy placed underneath the outhouse structure. And again, the applicant, as stated during the conditional use permit in May of this year, is just going to remove it from the property. And on Exhibit A, which is the uh, site survey on the right showing the structures, um, it appears to show that there's an existing greenhouse that may have been constructed, o constructed over the drain field, about 6 o'clock on the drawing, the very bottom. So that's an item that we're going to have to address with the applicant go um, in the future stages of this planning process. The Register of Deeds wanted to um, comment that the requested subdivision name of Nautilus Acres Subdivision could not be used. They recommend calling it Nautilus Acres Subdivision Number 2, as there was already a request for Nautilus Subdivision some years ago, and that is no longer in existence, but there is a history of Nautilus Acre Subdivision in the records for Register of Deeds, and they didn't want any confusion. So number two, uh, Nautilus Acres number two would be their recommendation. And also Department of Equalization wanted to comment that it appears that the owner's last name may have been misspelled on the certificates of ownership. Um, the request again for PL 1836 is to subdivide the existing property into two lots. The proposed two lots will meet the required lot size for their current zoning districts, <clears throat> excuse me, and the landowners will need to address the concerns with the outhouse, shed, and single-family residents at a minimum prior to the recording of a plat with the Register of Deeds. With that, staff would recommend approval of layout plat 1836 with nine conditions. Any questions for staff? I have a question. Go ahead. This right-of-way, is that going to be the approach to this uh, lot B then? The proposed right away? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I lived across from this property for 24 years, and uh, the Hilgemans are great people. But my one comment is it seems to me that, that uh, there's something of a slope between the house and the highway, and the highway sits down at a much lower grade than. Correct. And um, I mean, I'm not saying you can't put a road in there by any means, but I think it, it could be kind of problematic in terms of just soil shifting and, you know, um, so I think that's something to be kind of alert to, and I'm not in a uh, position to judge it, but, you know, I'm... I'm it, that could be why they're not going with the 40-foot wide right away, yes, and I'm I sure the road's not going to be that yeah, wide. Yeah. And then we'll just make sure that we put conditions yeah. in the future that stabilize yeah, because the they're going to have they're going to have to cut into that. Uh, there's going to be some elevation there towards the house, I think. Anyway, that was my only concern. Any further questions? PG, I have a question. The greenhouse that you mentioned on the map, I see there's a the rectangle signified by the greenhouse, and then there's a rectangle around that. Is that a slab? Uh, what is that? Well, that's what we got to figure out. When we went out there, when we have pictures of, we can't quite figure out what the other rectangle is for. Okay, so that's just, not, it wasn't going to hold this up because this is just a preliminary step. Okay. So it's something that we can handle the next step. I was just like, someone laid a slab over it <laughs> or a portion well, of it maybe? Sometimes, like, they'll, when these are, very rarely does it happen, but when engineers are drawing these, they leave something on and forget to unclick it or take it off, which gotcha. could have been what happened. Is it simply a garden outside of the... There's a fenced-in area, but... Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. Could be that. Any further questions for staff? Any audience? Oh, go ahead. Mark. Just out of curiosity, PJ, Sir. I, I think I kind of remember this discussion back in May, but uh, for historical factor, w or not, why are we insisting that they remove the, the outhouse? Is that part of the ordinances that just can't have an outhouse? 
I, I kind of like the idea of the historical, you know, <laughs> driving by a piece of property and seeing an outhouse there. Why are we forcing them to remove it or are we not? Well, Commissioner, we're not forcing them to remove it. They have the choice to either create a pit privy underneath it where it's a self-contained contained, contained system underneath, which there are outhouses in the county that are like that. Right. Um, they're choosing to remove it. Oh, okay. Too bad. <laughs> Thank you. Any further questions for staff? Any members of the audience like to speak on behalf of this item? All right, current recommendation is to approve layout plat 1836 with the following nine conditions. Is there a motion to approve? I would so move. Motion, and is there a second? Second. Motion to second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Takes us to item number 27. All right, item number 27. We get to address the... Uh, Scheduling of this hearing once again, has everyone heard the reason why we're rescheduling? I'm, I'm sure that everyone has heard the reason behind that. Um, I will say that I would like to do one quick um, thing, if y'all don't mind. I'd like to have public, if there's any public here who'd like to comment on this, if they would like to give their input on the meeting first, and then we can discuss it after we've had that uh, input. If anyone has no objection to that, I will do that as well. Um, mainly that, because we're mainly because we're removing it again. So, it, is that in addition to the written comments that we were handed? Yes. Okay. If, if there's someone else here, because we were handed some written comments, so yes. I want to go ahead and just make sure that you know both sides are represented either way. So, and if that's are both sides here? I I don't know. I haven't seen one of them, but I know what we received here. So, thank you. Is anyone here? like to speak on behalf of this item number 27 for the scheduling of the next hearing for the basically only talking about uh, availability and time frame if not then we'll just have the membership discuss it and figure out what's best for for us and what we think is best for the uh for this meeting um from what i understand and mark you can correct me if i'm wrong last time y'all did when y'all when the uh, board of commissioners scheduled y'all scheduled two dates just in case correct. And I don't think we did that when we had our conversation. So that might be a good thing for us to consider while we're doing this is scheduling two dates um, with the caveat that if we don't come to a conclusion or recommendation on the first date, we have a second date to continue it to just in case for the advertising purposes so that we're not having to re-advertise another 30 days out if we decide that we're going to uh, continue it for whatever reason. Sure. And what <clears throat> constitutes a day to you? An eight-hour day? <laughs> I, I'm well, talking I'm more. Just... Of, I got what you're saying. I, I'm talking more of a date, a date and time that we would say, you know, our first meeting is going to be on this date and time. The next meeting would be this date and time starting. And then, you know, obviously if there's a lot of individuals here to give comment, it could be a full day. It might be two hours. I, sure. Yeah. I, I can't okay. guarantee what that's going to end up being. I, I, I understand. Um, okay. Thank you. The, if we schedule two days, are we then obligated to at least be there for two days or a portion thereof? No, because the way we're going to word it, and I'll let Michelle Hoffman speak to that because she's the legal one there. Okay. Michelle Hoffman, State's Attorney's Office. Uh, office. Um, that issue was also addressed when the board set their initial two-day hearing. The motion should basically be that we're, you're scheduling a hearing on this date, whatever that date might be, and if, if, a decision, if the commission feels that the matter should be continued for further comment and ultimately decision, then there would be the second date. But that the, the motion should be very clear that any hearing on the second day will be only if necessary. And uh, the notice in the newspaper will also reflect that. That So no one shows up the second day and says, oh, I wasn't able uh, to be that's heard. That's the problem I'm concerned about. Well, they had it for two days, and I couldn't get there the first day, so, you know, what's the deal? You know, so we have to be very careful with that, I would think. Exactly. So you need to make it sure it's very clear that the, se the, the second date will be he held only if necessary necessary and only if if this commission feels they need further public comment or need additional time for to make a decision then how many meetings have been held in the evening over the past number of years is this typical for uh, a meeting to be held at night versus during the day since I've been on the board of commissioners it's been it it's been typical to have them at night when people can get off work and come and comment. Oh, okay. 
when we met before, I think, PJ, you addressed fact about security in the building and so on and so forth. And so in as much as I'm new to the commission, I'm just trying to clarify yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Most of the majority of the meetings are during the day. There's maybe been five evening meetings, I think, in the last four or five years that I can remember. There are more logistics that go into it, though, as far as um, having a sheriff deputy or two here, making sure that the building's open, that kind of stuff. But it's not stuff that we haven't done before. Okay, thank you. And I believe since I've been on the on the uh, planning commission, we've only had one in the evening. You can correct me if I'm wrong, PJ, like in the last four years, we've only had just one evening meeting. And that one was not well attended, if I remember correct on that one. Uh, yeah. Not saying that it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have an evening meeting. Right. But, yeah. The ones that we had were the mining ordina mining ordinances and the special meetings that we had for that. So right. because of the attendance, there was so much of it. Right. Thank you. Any further questions or further <clears throat> input on this? Uh, do, do I understand correctly? We're looking at at least January to make sure that we meet all the notification um, advertisement criteria and everything of that nature. Correct. Okay. That's why it's up on the screen for you there. We also have a list of the dates that um, one of the rep their representatives is not able to attend. Or, Can you explain this calendar and, to me then? Uh, basically, yeah. What, what this is is a office calendar that we use for submittals. So um, you can see the major holidays that the county is either open or not open. So the first is New Year's, which okay. we're closed. On the 21st, the observance of Martin Luther King's birthday, but we're actually open. Planning commission meetings on the 14th and 28th, board meetings on the 2nd and 15th. The red and the green, I would just, you can disregard those. Those are just the base dates when people submit applications and then showing what meetings that they will be heard at. So the main things are to look at are the purple, blue, and orange, or yellow. Do you have a recommended date? <laughs> it's up to you guys. We're here Monday through Friday, pretty much, 8 to 5. So, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, Rich. So, Jerry, could you let us know what the uh, advanced um, me about, um, uh, notification requirements are for the meeting and the newspaper and all of those things? Well, at least 30 days out that they would have to resend their notices. Okay. So 30 days? Well, that's for their notices to resend. And then for the advertisements, it's um, two successive weeks and then at least 10 days prior to the meeting. So I'm, I'm trying to under, what's our, if we, if we decide on a date uh, today, what's, and that notification goes out sometime this week, when's the earliest available time to get this resolved? Are you guys looking at December or January? Isn't it 30 days? <clears throat> Not for advertising. <clears throat> for, you got to advertise 30 days out. I see. Thank you. So, yeah, I think it's the notices you need to send to your neighbors 30 days. No. I see. Michelle Hoffman, State's Attorney's Office. We can double check. I believe the first available week, given the 30-day uh, notice by letter, that's required under the uh, Section 320 would be December 17th. I think uh, the reason we were looking at January was just because of the conflict that the holidays might present uh, for the commission and the board. I would also note that uh, the legal representative of the applicant um, is a, has certain conflicts. I will mention that the first two weeks in January dates that look as though they're available um, for the commission as well as the legal representative is January 3rd through 4th and January 8th through 10th. I do have the dates for the third and fourth week of January as well. Those are the first available? Yeah, January 3rd through 4th and January 8th through 10th. Go, moving into the third week in January, it would be January 16th through 18th. We have to avoid regular meeting dates. <clears throat> So you're saying a Thursday and a Friday in January? Not necessarily Thursday and Friday. The Thursday and Friday of the third and, third and fourth, January 3rd and 4th would work. 8th and 10th. Both and January 8th through 10th, which is a Tuesday through a Thursday. And January 16th through 18th. So um, from my standpoint, then, uh, I... I should we just propose dates? I, so we, I'd be looking at 
um, the evening of the 8th or the 9th for the first meeting, and then I would uh, go to the 16th or the 15th uh, for a second meeting. I mean, do you just make those a week apart? Does that, I'm just throwing that out there. I'd avoid the 15th, it's already a board meeting day. You don't think the meeting should follow the very next day? Or do they need to? Could. It'd be nice if it, if you could do them back to back, sure. it's up to the commission. So the 8th and the 9th? Yeah, I could do the 8th and 9th. The 8th for the meeting and then the 9th if, if necessary. I am available both the 8th and the 9th as well. Are we talking about evening meetings both days or one day a daytime meeting, the other a nighttime meeting? Uh, that would That's be your, yeah. up to us. Yeah. Oh, okay. We anticipate probably a six to eight hour meeting at least the first time. Sure. I, I would plan around that. A six to eight hour meeting? If so shorter, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mr. Chair, yes, is there an ahead. option to do a weekend? Is that I don't know. It's never been that was requested. a request in one of our emails. Because if it's going to be that long, I mean, I couldn't imagine being here at five till possibly midnight for one day. And we're here at eleven one night for a meeting. Once. Yeah. Somehow, my guess that on a weekend the attendance would not be so good. <laughs> I, I just think people would say, "Oh, this is a weekend." I mean. Uh, you know, they're more inclined, I think, to go out on, a, on an evening, quite frankly. That's just my it's important to them, assessment of human behavior. <laughs> well, I'd like to make a suggestion that, and, and you know, it's the same suggestion I made last, meeting, uh, last time we did this, but start in mid-afternoon, like 3 o'clock or something, right. because I don't really think that most people that come to these sit through the entirety of the meeting either. Right. And this way, it um, will get some done during that last portion of the afternoon and then extend however long we need it into the into the evening. Good idea. I think that's a very good point. When we had visited before, we indicated that we would limit the amount of time in which person could speak. I think we ought to, in addition to limiting the amount of time they can speak, I think we should limit the number of hours that the meeting will be held. In, in other words, it, it, you know, if we go, you know, from three, you know, add eight hours and that's it. And then go on to the next day. <laughs> add eight hours. I like well, but I think, I think the, the chair can, can terminate it and we, it, we move to the next day at any time. I mean, isn't that right? You can right. just say, we're tired. <laughs> Let's sure. pick this up. I, I don't know if putting a, a start and stop date or time on it is appropriate. And for that very reason, I mean, what happens if we get here and we, we're like, well, we, we, you know, you know, it's ten. Let's just say it's ten o'clock, and we said it's going to be eight hours, and, not, and that's till eleven. Sure. So, are we going to hang out here until eleven just in case somebody walks in? <laughs> oh, or, I see. Yeah. I understand. I don't want to commit us to being here if we've sure. heard every single person going through, and we can come to a conclusion, and then we have to sit here for an hour just to wait, just in case. I understand. Uh, I don't think that's I appropriate. But I do think if we do start it in the afternoon, like you said, and that might be the best option is starting it in the afternoon on the first date and then continuing it in the morning the next day if we need to maybe maybe consider, uh, depending on where we're at when we get here, ending it at 9. Not that we say it's from 3 to 9, but consider ending it at 9 if we haven't come up to a conclusion and then start it and then continue on. Um, the following morning. That, that way makes we, good sense. That way we're kind of still fresh. We're not wasting sure. another half a day and coming back in. I shouldn't say wasting a half a day because some of us get up and do other things. But um, I think I kind of like your thought process on that one. Yeah, that's a good idea. Any other input on that? Sounds sensible. Mm -hmm. Could I have a request a restatement of the motion? I don't know if there was an actual motion yet. We were just no, discussing, I didn't hear one either. discussing okay. the the thought process. But if I understand what Sandy's going with and what we were talking about, we would start at roughly three o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I'm open to whatever that is and then go till a, you know, whatever time we deem is appropriate for us. And then the next morning kick off at zero nine, a normal meeting. Um, so now we just come down to say, what time do we start? We need a motion to say, what time do we start? What and what days are we going to cover? <clears throat> are you talking about the eighth? Is that what you're or are you just well? Are you, I've heard a are couple you that people say. I've heard some people say the eighth is fine. So to me, the eighth is fine. 
Um, if it doesn't mesh with anybody else's schedule, we should probably know about it. So yeah, we can I, I've got an eye surgery on the seventh, so I wouldn't, which I don't think would incapacitate me totally, but <laughs> uh, I think I can get it rescheduled, so it shouldn't be a problem. Is there any thought of what the minimum time needed should be on this? Oh, I think they've already mentioned we're going to probably spend anywhere between six and eight hours um, with testimony on opponent and proponent. So a two o'clock start would almost certainly go past five, definitely giving people a chance after five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or it could start at three. So what if we start at three o'clock on the eighth and then we start at three o'clock on the ninth if needed? Or do you want to start right away in the morning on the, on the ninth? I think starting in the morning is good. And this is the reason behind it. Some people work in the morning and then some people work in the evening. So, you know, you've got two different groups of people that might not be able to make the uh, the one on the third. Uh, I mean, remember when I worked at the hospital, my work shift started at midnight or at noon and carried me through to midnight. So, you know what I mean? It, you're going to hit some or you're not. We may not even hit them on the ninth if we scheduled at nine o'clock in the morning either. You know, if we make a decision on, see, that's kind of the, the catch 22 in this. We, we could come to a decision and no one would, you know, need to testify the following day. Right. So uh, I, my feeling is that the later afternoon is probably allows some people to be excused from their normal work responsibilities easier than in the morning or earlier in the day. And that way they can say, you know, I'm taking a couple hours off early, Joe, and, and that I think might be more effective. So I, I would say the three o'clock thing. That's why I'm kind of attracted to that. I, yeah, that makes good that sense. sense. Okay. Well, is there a motion for a specific time and date? I would make a motion to have the special meeting on January 8th at 3 p.m. And the second meeting, if needed, on January 9th at 9 a.m. I'll second that motion. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, so that gets us that. All right. Item number 28. Number 28 is County Board Report. The Board of Commissioners concurred with the Planning Commission's recommendations from the October 22nd, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Any questions for PJ on that? All right. Item number 29, items from the public. Anybody would like to come forward? If not, item number 30, items from the staff. Uh, item 30, it says up to C, but we have up to E. You, you have oh, you've added another one even after yeah. we talked. Added two more. Yep. All right. Uh, the first is the building permit report for October of this year. Single family residences uh, are down 12% over this time last year. We've taken in 67 uh, single family residence building permits over 76 at this time in 2017. It appears, and again, comment on this every time, cell towers are up 54%. Again, probably a spike in new technology. Uh, sheds and barns are down 16%. And to counteract that, garages and carports are up 16%. Mm. Um, residential additions are down 19%. But overall for the year, we've taken in 729 uh, issued, sorry, 729 building permits over 627 last year for a 16% increase. The valuation, however, is down by 20%. Any questions for PJ? All right. B. Item B is our holiday luncheon on Monday, December 3rd. Uh, that's just a regular meeting day, I believe, right? And then right after the meeting, we just go up to the planning commission, uh, planning commission, planning department in that large conference room, and we just have brunch or lunch, depending on what time it is. So you guys don't need to bring anything other than just attend. But if you want to buy Starbucks for everybody, we won't argue about that. <laughs> Item C is planning two interviews. And, sorry, Cassie, we want one for each one, right? The plan of two interview? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, as we've discussed before, the building permits that we take in, we take a certain percentage of that money and the rest went to um, the highway department for a drainage fund. Um, the Board of Commissioners approved a kind of a reallocation of some of the funds. We give the, the highway department the first $65,000 that we take in with building permits every year. Then the remainder goes to the planning department. And in using this money that is 
already being generated without any increases or anything else. Um, it's able to support a plan or two position. So we've already started recruitment. We actually are going to have our first round of interviews on the 27th of November. And then uh, the 7th of December. And we're looking for a planning commissioner to represent uh, uh, one com planning commissioner at the first meeting or the first interview on the 27th between 10 and 1.30, and then a different planning commissioner on uh, the December 7th meeting, which times to be determined. What were those dates again, please, PJ? The first is November 27th between basically 10 and 1.30, but arriving probably at 9.45, and then the second would be November 7th, December 7th, but we don't have a time for that one yet. Do you want a commitment today from someone? Or uh, do you want us to? Well, the next meeting is the 26th would be the day before do, the first interview. I could be, I could represent on either one of those days, I believe. I could make either one work as well. So you pick let one. Let me know if you and need me to. We don't need motions. We're just looking for somebody. Yeah, but if, just let me know if you need me. And if so, which day? And I can make that work. Anybody else? Did you? I'm sorry. We'll talk after. I'll, I'll set a date and then we can figure out. Did you have it? Okay. Uh, um, thank you. Actually leads into item D. Um, there will be two more opportunities uh, to serve on interview panels uh, because Mike King, our ordinance officer, his last day was last Friday. Um, he's moving back to Florida. He had an opportunity that he couldn't really pass up to live next to family, which doesn't really come up as often as um, you would like, but he, probably was, he, he couldn't pass it up. So. Unfortunately, it's going, to be a, it's going to be a huge loss to our department and to the community because he was able to do a lot and make a lot of friends out in the community and get stuff done without yeah. having to expend extra taxpayer dollars for abatements and stuff. So, Very good. Um, item E, uh, just a reminder for the December 17th Planning Commission meeting, that is a 2 p.m. start, not a 9 a.m. It's the only meeting of the Planning Commission of the year that does not start at 9. I'm sorry, which date? December 17th. So I'd just like to remind everybody of that because sometimes it can kind of creep up on you pretty fast. PJ, just so you know, if y'all don't mind me going back to that, I I think I can do December 7th actually the best for being on that interview panel. Just let me know the time. Okay. That way, Kathy, if you want the 27th, my family's can, in town. <laughs> I can make it, I can, I'll make it work, yes. Okay. Okay, what time on December 17th? 2 p.m. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, actually up to about three years ago, I think, we only had one meeting in December, um, which then a lot of applications would come in, conditional use permits and such, that had to wait almost six weeks for even the first, well, in addition to the advertising for the first hearing, and the board would have to hear those. So we threw in the second meeting. Um, I think this was when you might have been first year. I think I so. Think. That sounds about right. And uh, so at the time of adding the second meeting, it was also discussed to have it at two. Sure. So we kind of kept with that since then. All right. Nothing further. Nothing further. Anything from the membership? Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead, Rich. Um, I'm likely not going to be here on November 26th for the November 26th meeting. Um, I, I, I'm not able to confirm that at this time, but it's looking like uh, I, I will not be there. And then, unfortunately, I will not be uh, in town for December 3rd as well. So... One of these years, I'll get to the party. <laughs> You're missing out when you don't go to that party, Rich. <laughs> All right, any, any other items from the membership? Being none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.